Welcome to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're continuing along with the steam fitters as we learn more about our state's natural gas distribution system. So let's get started with Matt Baylor from Weed Energy. Well, Matt, beautiful day for installing some new pipe. Looks like the guys are hard at work here. Yes, uh, currently on this job, we're replacing an existing gas main that's out in the road. Uh, it was installed back in the early to, to late 50s and, and put in a new one just uh, on the edge of the sidewalk. So similar to previous shows that you and I have done, you said it's about an 80 year life expectancy. So for this neighborhood, the time is growing closer. And so that's why it's on your schedule? Correct, we're constantly taking a look at the integrity of our system, prioritizing really what mains that we would want to replace within a current year. And this is one that uh, we wanted to send to construction this year. So they're installing a new plastic gas main and eventually doing the services. Well, it's sure awesome out of Germantown when you were showing me that huge gas pipeline coming in. Now that was a service main coming in and to complete natural gas pipeline distribution, you have to service all these homes in our communities. And I know on another show, Elizabeth had mentioned over 36,000 miles of gas piping just with We Energies. That's a lot of pipe that eventually needs to be replaced. Yes, so we're actively replacing throughout the entire year. So it's fun to be involved with the process. Sure, well, I wanna learn more about that process, but before we head on down the line, I just have to reach out to the viewer and stress the importance of slowing down when you see these signs. I mean, safety is always of paramount importance on a project, but the neighborhood can play a role in that as well. Correct, the, the public is actually a big part of what we talk about with the crew on a daily basis because they play a really big role on safety. So we really ask people to slow down, pay attention to the work zones and be safe as they're driving through or walking through the area. So Matt, what specifically is being replaced here when we talk about the service side of a gas distribution replacement? Yeah, we're replacing our existing gas main that's out in the road and we're also replacing the services that run up to the individual homes. So that's four inch down there. This looks like two inch. Is that gonna be joined together? Once they actually have all of the four inch plastic pipe installed, then they'll be coming back here and fusing the two inch PE pipe to it. So when we get into the process itself, what's involved with that? I mean, the first step must be to call Digger's Hotline. Before the crew even gets on out here, what they would do is call into Digger's Hotline or the National 811 number, and then they would come on out and start exposing the existing facilities. So that's why they were out here earlier. Okay, and so when I see the four inch there, is that ready to be pulled underground? Correct, the directional drill equipment over there is gonna be pulling that into the ground. Okay, and that'll eventually tie in with this two inch here? Yes, exactly. Okay, so if the existing natural gas pipeline is out in the street, you still have service coming off into the houses. That's gotta be challenging, because you're gonna have to, if I understand it correctly, you're gonna have to cut that off and, and cap it, and how, how does that all work? Yes, exactly, that's one of the challenges. Um, so the next part of the process would be after the main's installed, uh, the crew would be out here installing the, the new service from the main to the house. I'm always amazed when I drive by a job site like this at the sheer number of highly skilled professionals you have working here. Now, who's in charge of this project? Uh, KS Energies is uh, the main contractor out here, and they use the operators, the laborers, and the steam fitters. But really, the steam fitters are the ones that are out here doing all of the fusing in the project. And since we're dealing with natural gas, that fusing is extremely important because there's no room for error. I mean, that training they go through must be just incredible. Yeah, the training is significant because it's in the natural gas industry that is regulated. So training is very important. It does take some time and, and effort on that end to, to get people out here and doing the work in the field. Well, and along those lines, well, would it mean to we energies if there weren't young adults wanting to do this type of work and moving into this field? I guess with any uh, infrastructure like this, it's it's really aging. So you know we do have a long-term plan to replace a lot of our facilities, and if we don't have people coming up and 
and uh, filling these positions in, in the field here, it's going to be a struggle for us to actually replace our, our facilities. Well, you know, I really appreciate you coming on, shedding some light on the final stages of the natural gas distribution. Right now I'm going to go learn more about the steam fitters role with Jim O'Brien. My pleasure. Well, Jim, I was just talking to Matt, and he was explaining what's going on here in this neighborhood and several neighborhoods around the area with We Energies replacing the old gas mains and services to houses, but they're using PE or polyethylene piping? Yeah, that's correct. When we were doing the steel, we had the welders welding the steel together. Now we've got the PE, we've got the steam fitters fusing the plastic together. Okay, well, take us through this process. Okay, here we got our 601 members here, and what they're doing now is they're facing the edge of the pipe they gotta get a nice flush surface so that when they bring these two pieces together that they fit nice and flush so that they can get a good joint out of okay. that fusion. They took care of the cleaning of the pipe and now he's putting the actual heating element in. Each piece of the PE is gonna be brought together on that heating element and it's gonna start to heat the PE. Now he'll be watching that and he'll be judging it when it gets to the right temperature. They'll pull that heating element out and then they're going to manually bring those two pieces of pipe together and fuse them. You'll actually see a bead that will curl back and with these guys with all the training that they went through they know exactly what they're looking for to get a perfect joint on that natural gas line. How strong are those joints? They're extremely strong. When we run a test they'll cut a strap out of that and they'll destructively test it and it's actually stronger in the fuse joint than the pipe itself. Get out of here, that's incredible. Again, that's reassuring to the public out there that these joints are done by the highly skilled professionals, but they're tested as well to ensure quality. Yeah, it's, it's not just melting pipe together. This is a lot of training and a lot of skill goes into this and it's very crucial that every step is followed perfectly. So once he melts the pipe and he fuses it together, I mean, is it just going by his look, his experience, to know if it's done correctly, or can he test it out on site? What he'll also do is he'll check it with the gauge to make sure that when that bead comes back, it's a go-no-go -no -go gauge, which will actually say, this is a good bead or that's a bad bead, and it's got to fall within the requirements of that gauge. They have to do everything by procedure here. Every year, they're requalified to do this job, which means they have to do a written test and the hands-on test and every step of that procedure has to be followed exactly because yes, we're dealing with natural gas, we're in, in homes and streets, and everything's gotta be perfect, and that's what we pride ourselves on with all of our training and our skilled labor that we learn in doing this job right Well, here. let me tell you, that's reassuring to me as a resident of the community, I want to make sure that the natural gas piping that's being put in the ground is going to last another 80 or 100 years and it's done yeah. correctly. And that's the type of professionals that we want and the training that they've had. Yeah, I mean, pay for our own training. We've got our training centers where these guys will come in and perfect that skill. Everything is safety, everything is training. So the end result is excellent work that they do here. And then I also notice that they uh, sign their name or their number and date it and time it as well? Yeah, each fuse will have a date and then an employee number so they know who did that particular joint. Well, great peace of mind for the community. After seeing the process and the skilled professionals doing it, I'm glad that they're here. Can you and I head down and see where it actually enters the house? Yep, let's go down to the next job site.
Well, Jim, you know, throughout the last couple of shows, we've seen how natural gas arrives in either 24, 36 inch pipe, huge pipes, mm -hmm. and gets to our communities. And now it's being directed through service mains and ultimately up to somebody's house. And it has to get from the street to the house. And is this an example of one of the pipes that you're going to be replacing? Right, this is an existing pipe here. So here, like when you saw we were fusing the PE main, mm -hmm. well, this is still the old steel main that's in the street which would have the welded on service tee, which has the steel pipe that's going up to the house. Now in this case, they're gonna be running a new plastic main behind the house, and there's gonna be a PE service that will be replacing this pipe here. Okay, so instead of steel, it'll be the PE or the polyethylene yep. piping. Yep, all part of the infrastructure and in replacing and upgrading their entire system. Sure, and you know, I remember being back at the training center and I saw the guys outside welding on the, the tees there and Again, that's what I think about when I think of steam fitters. It's steel pipe welding, but what we've learned is they also do the polyethylene pipe fusing. Yeah, back at the school, you saw them in that trench box and that tight area welding sure. on that service tee. But uh, yeah, the same thing. They'll be down in these trenches right here fusing the plastic. Okay, can we head up and see uh, where it joins to the meter? Yep, let's do that next, too. Okay, Stu, here we're back on the side of the house now where they're doing a refit. Now, we showed that the old main was out in the road that was the welded steel. Mm -hmm. They had the welded line come into the house. Sure. You look to the left there, you can see the old service line. Oh, yeah. That one's going to be abandoned. This one on the right, now that's the new service line that was brought in in PE now, like we showed in the other segments where we're doing the plastic fusion. And so it's a steam fitter that does this work, has to remove the old one, and then it looks like he's using all brand new piping? Yep, what he's doing now is he's gonna connect to the existing line that goes to the house, which feeds all the appliances and fixtures in the house. So it's the steam fitter's job here now to pipe and repipe in the new gas meter. Okay, can you quickly take us through what that process entails? The other meter was on the left side, now he's on the right side, so he's gotta reconfigure his piping to come to this side. So he's got to do the measuring and fitting to come up to that. All of his uh, threaded joints are going to be lubricated with what they call the pipe dope, which helps bring the joints together so you get a nice tight seal. So is it actual sealant or is it a lubricant? It's more of a lubricant. You know, some of the actual pipe dopes do have a little bit of a sealant, but it's mainly because you have steel on steel. These, these threads are tapered. Okay, so if I grab one of these. Right. It's a tapered thread, narrower here than here. Okay. So as it screws into the fitting, with the taper, it'll start to wedge and seal oh. into the pipe. But if you had steel on steel, it's gonna bind, so that helps to lubricate the threads to draw them together. Okay, so a little bit of sealant, but more for lubrication, right. so the pipe will actually cinch itself tight. And again, we're working with natural gas here. We wanna make sure there's absolutely no opportunity for leakage. Again, it relates back to our training. You know, when we're back in the training school, we have mock-ups of meters where we have them actually going through this piping process, how to measure, how to put the fittings together, and how to leak test everything. So it all goes back again to that skilled trade training Boy, that we every provide. every facet of the steam fitting world revolves around training. And that's good, that's good news for us out in the community. And what's been fascinating over the last couple of shows is we've learned so much about our natural gas distribution piping system mm -hmm. from the big, you know, 36 inch, 24 inch mains coming in, feeding the communities, all the way down to neighborhood four inch mains to the one inch that feeds the houses to the meters here. And what I've learned is that the steam fitters are really responsible for providing and getting us gas that we can use. And we all love natural gas. I mean, we're all homeowners. This isn't a good feeling to know that we've got skilled labor from the steam fitters that are safe and trained 
to perform this work all the way from the main transmission all the way down to the house. Is there a big call for this line of work out there? Is there lots of job opportunities? 601 covers the entire state of Wisconsin. So all gas distribution and mainline work through the entire state. We've got projects like this going on in Eau Claire, La Crosse, Hudson, Wisconsin, Eagle River. And um, there's always a need for individuals that are willing to work outside you know, sometimes on hot days, sometimes in cold weather. But, you know, a good rewarding career. It's construction, it's hard work, but it's a good paying job. Well, that's great. If you're a viewer in any part of our great state and you want to help improve the quality of life here, steam fitting is definitely an option. I appreciate you coming on and shedding some light on a fantastic career. Very good, it's been my pleasure. Are you ready for a career choice that rewards you for your hard work, compensates you for your knowledge and willingness to learn, pays you more money, provides better benefits, and offers a comfortable retirement? Then contact your local Steamfitters 601 Training Center and attend our next trade orientation. You'll learn about our complete five-year apprenticeship program that's designed to help you progress from the basic on-the-job skills to the top of the welding and HVACR service industry. You also don't need a big down payment to start your steam fitter training. Just a good work ethic that includes showing up on time, working hard, and working smart. And better yet, you're well paid through your apprenticeship, and you earn more as you learn more. So make a career choice that's full of rewards and contact Steam Fitters Local 601 today for more information. Welcome back to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and so far in today's show, we've been following the installation of natural gas piping from the street to your home. Now let's head out to the Steam Fitters Local 601 Training Center where we can learn how steam fitters are trained to install this type of pipe. Well, Todd, so far in today's show, we've been continuing with our natural gas pipeline infrastructure in our state, and we've gotten to the point where we're bringing it into the house off the mains under the street. And what I notice is there's a lot of polyethylene pipe. Now, that's the steam fitter's responsibility to get it in, right? Even though it's not metal, it's plastic. And is that becoming more popular, using plastic pipe? It's really become more popular in the last 10, 15 years. Now that they, they've developed it to be used for water, gas, very versatile, and it's very durable, flexible. It's got definitely a lot of advantages over the steel pipe when it's being used for, for underground stuff. Okay, so when a steam fitter's working with the polyethylene piping and natural gas in this case, are there certain standards that they have to follow? Oh yes, there's very strict standards. Utility companies write the standards and they follow the generic procedures from the piping manufacturers and the manufacturers of the fusion equipment. Okay, so here's a class that you have going on here today. What are these young professionals learning? Well, they're learning how to fuse polyethylene today. So this machine here is fusing four inch polyethylene. The gentleman just removed the heater after he melted. Now he's actually fusing the joint. You can see the, the molten plastic actually roll over and that's part of the fusion process. That's actually what makes the joint intact. Well, you know, it looks on the surface to be a very simple process, 
But how durable, that's my question, how durable is this joint right here? That joint, when you cut it apart, you would not even be able to see where the fusion is. Really? And the joint's stronger than the pipe. So is it like a chemical reaction, or how is that doing that? It's actually a fusion, that's why they call it fusion, because the, chemically, the material has become molten, it's all, the, the molecules have rejoined, and it's become all solidified polyethylene again. Wow, so we never have to worry about that failing. That's very important when we're talking about natural gas oh, absolutely. pipelines. Okay, so that's four inch. What about that's over four here? four inch. This is a two inch butt fusion over here. So same process as that one. This machine actually can be pulled right into the ditch. They actually call it a pit bull is its nickname. So when, when someone's working in the ditch and they have to fuse pipe, they can bring this machine right down in the ditch with them. So even though these are in perfect working conditions, we're in a classroom, the material, the equipment that they're using here are what they are going to use in the real world out in the This day. is it. This is exactly what they use. Okay, and as we saw earlier on today's show, meters, meter sockets, I mean, those are being changed out and the steam fitters are doing it. So what are they learning here? Big call for replacement of meters, residential and commercial, all over Wisconsin. So what they're gonna be doing is they're getting trained to be able to properly replace meters. There may be some piping involved where they have to repipe um, to make the new meter set fit. And then they're also going to have to go into the residence or business, check for leaks, and relight all their appliances that may have standing pilots. And those are all yeah, steam so, fitters uh, that are doing the work? Yes. Okay, so again, every time we do a show, I learn more roles of steam fitters. I mean, it's just amazing the career opportunities that are out there. Now, are you finding that there's a demand? Is that why there's so many students here? Every time I come here, there's more and more students. Oh, absolutely. And we're bringing up a lot of new people into this trade. It's on the way up. Well, Todd, I really appreciate you coming on today's show and giving us a little insight to the training that's required for steam fitters. Then my pleasure, Stu. Well, Joe, it's always awesome learning more about the steam fitters role in our communities. And over the last couple of shows, it was fascinating to see just how important steam fitters are in our state's natural gas distribution. I love seeing the big pipes all the way down to the service lines feeding our homes. Right, I, I tell you what, our guys do all of that. And it takes a very high degree of, of skill, a lot of training and these guys are the best. They're yeah, the you know, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I expect to see the welding on the steel pipes, but to see the plastic that they were fusing together, I love to see that industry evolve like that. It's pretty fascinating to me. That plastic is a relatively new material, a little more high tech, corrosion resistant, and that's our guys that do that. Uh, they have a lot of training that goes in to learn how to do that properly and safely. And you know, that's the thing that we always learn is that training is at the forefront. And we're out here today on Madison's east side. Pretty exciting times. It's, there's a groundbreaking ceremony going on for that new state-of-the-art training facility. Right, as you just mentioned, this is great news for us today. We're gonna be breaking ground for a new state-of-the-art training center that's gonna serve the Madison area and central Wisconsin. And uh, I'll tell you what, we couldn't be more excited to be doing this. As I understand it, the future looks bright and this is over 58,000 square feet. That's how big this new building's gonna be? Right, it's gonna allow us to grow into the future, offer all the cutting edge technology that exists now. And there's things that we're sure of that five years from now, haven't even been invented. So this facility is going to have labs in it. It's going to have a, a weld area to learn how to weld. It's going to have a three-story indoor rigging structure so the guys can learn how to move loads safely. We're going to have a 10,000 square foot HVAC lab that's going to have all the modern equipment, state-of-the-art things that go into buildings nowadays. And at over 58,000 square feet, it's going to be a very impressive structure out here. But what impresses me most is that it's paid for by the members of 601. 
That's correct, Stu, 100% paid for by the membership. We don't take any money from the state, from local governments. It's all done by the membership, investing in themselves. And I'd like to just give a special thanks to our former members, the past membership who started these training schools years ago. We're now carrying on that tradition out here. This is going to be a fantastic facility, and the membership that exists right now is investing in the future. So we're looking, of course, to talk to high school kids, grade school kids, show them what this trade is about, because you're right, this trade needs more people. It's a growing industry. Well, if there's a viewer out there and they're considering coming out once the facility is done in a year or so, I would take you up on that offer. Get out here, learn what a steam fitter's role in our communities is. And really, it's all about quality of life and steam fitters play an integral role in increasing our quality of life here in our state. You know, Joel, I really appreciate catching up with you and you coming on today's show and help spread the exciting news. Great. Thank you, Stu. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network.